Hello friends, so welcome to the 23rd lecture of this course. So, as you know in the last lecture we have discussed the definition of positive definite matrices and then we have discussed few methods that how to check whether a given matrix is positive definite or not. We have also learned the properties of eigenvalues of positive definite matrices. In this lecture we will extend the same concept and we will see few applications of positive definite matrices in particular when you are having a positive definite quadratic form. As you know that in the last lecture I have defined a positive definite quadratic form as q of x equals to x transpose a x where a is a symmetric matrix of order n and x is a vector from the n dimensional vector space. Now, if this matrix A becomes D, D means we are having a diagonal representation of A, then the corresponding quadratic form that is x transpose d x is called diagonal representation of the quadratic form. For example, if you consider x belongs to R 3 and a b a 3 by 3 matrix, then if you take a equals to 3 0 0 0 5 0 0 0 1, then the quadratic form q x which is given x, x transpose into a into x which will be x 1 x 2 x 3 multiplied with a 3 0 0 0 5 0 0 0 1 into x vector then this comes out to be 3 x 1 square plus 5 x 2 square plus x 3 square. So, this particular quadratic form is a diagonal quadratic form. So, I can say in other words that a quadratic form is said to be diagonal quadratic form if there is no cross term or cross product term. So, here my meaning of cross product term means a term something like x 1 x 2 or x 2 x 3 or x 1 x 3. So, all these are having 0 coefficient. So, I can represent this quadratic form basically in this way. So, x t a x. So, here a is a diagonal matrix. So, i equals to 1 to n a i i into x i square where x i are the components of the vector x. This is another example of the quadratic form. Now, we are having a very important result and we will see the application of this theorem later on. So, so that every quadratic form x transpose a x can be diagonalized by making a change of variable or coordinates let us say y equals to q transpose x. So, let us see the proof of this. So, proof let q x equals to x transpose a x be a quadratic form. Where a is a symmetric matrix of 
of order n and x is a vector from the n dimensional real uh, uh, vector space. Now, as we know that a is symmetric so there exist a diagonal matrix d and an orthogonal matrix q such that a can be written as q d q dot transpose means as we discussed earlier also if a is a symmetric matrix it is always diagonalizable and here the diagonal matrix d will be having the eigen values of a as the main diagonal entries and q will come from the eigen vectors of a and those you can write as an orthogonal set of eigen vectors. Now, or so if I substitute this form of A in my quadratic form, so I can write x transpose into q into d into q transpose into x. Now, define a transformation a vector y which is having the same dimension as of x as q transpose x. Then y transpose will become x transpose into q and this particular quadratic form can be written as y transpose into d into y which is can be written as sigma i equals to 1 to n d i i into y i square which is a quadratic form, but a but in diagonal representation. So, this is the result which we have to prove and this is the proof of this. So, this is the proof which I have done just now. Now, let us take an, an application of this theorem. So, by diagonalizing the quadratic form q x equals to 13 x 1 square plus 10 x 1 x 2 plus 13 x 2 square plot the curve q x equals to 72, where x 1 and x 2 are the coordinate axis. So, what curve we need to plot that is q x equals to 13 x 1 x 2 plus 10 x 1 x 2 plus 13 x 2 square and this is equals to 72. So, we need to plot this particular curve. Now, q x can be written as x 1 x 2 13 5 5 and 13 into x 1 x 2 and this equals to 72. So, here the matrix A equals to 5, A equals to 13, 5, 5 and 13 which is associated with the quadratic form q x. Now, 
let us perform the diagonalization of the matrix A. So, here if I calculate the Eigen value of the matrix A, it comes out to be 13 minus lambda 5 5 and 13 minus lambda and this equals to 0. So, if I solve it, it will be 13 minus lambda whole square minus 25 equals to 0. This gives me Eigen value as lambda equals to 8 and 18. Now, if I calculate the Eigen vector corresponding to Eigen value lambda equals to 8, then a minus 8 i into x equals to 0 gives me 5 x 1 plus 5 x 2 equals to 0. The equation from the first row from the matrix a minus 8 i and the equation from the second row will be the same that is 5 x 1 plus x 2 equals to 0. 5 x 1 plus 5 x 2 equals to 0. Now, from these two equations I can write x 1 equals to minus x 2. So, the Eigen vector corresponding to lambda equals to 8 can be written as if I take x 1 as 1. So, x 2 will become minus 1 and if I want to write it as a unit vector. So, it will become 1 by root 2 into 1 and minus 1. Similarly, if I calculate the Eigen vector corresponding to Eigen value lambda equals to 18, then it comes out to be 5. So, 18 minus 30, 13 minus 18 will become minus 5 x 1 plus 5 x 2 equals to 0 and the second equation will become 5 x 1 minus 5 x 2 equals to 0. So, from here I am getting x 1 equals to x 2 and the corresponding Eigen vector will become unit Eigen vector 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2. So, in this way I can write the matrix A as B or q where q is 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2 and the matrix D. So, D will be 8, 0, 0, 18 and then again q transpose. So, it will become 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2. 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2. Now, the associated quadratic form can be written as q x equals to x 1 x 2 and then matrix 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2 which is my matrix q. Then I am having matrix D 8 0 0 18 and then I am having q transpose which is 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2 into x 1 x 2. So, now assume another vector y which is y 1 y 2 this equals to 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2 that is q transpose into x. So, x is here x 1 x 2. So, basically my y 1 is 1 by root 2 x 1 minus 1 by root 2 x 2 
and y2 is 1 by root 2 x1 plus 1 by root 2 x2. So, in this way I can write the quadratic form 13 x 1 square plus 10 x 1 x 2 plus 13 x 2 square 72 in a new variables y 1 and y 2 and it will become basically at y 1 square plus 18 y 2 square this equals to 72 or this I can write y 1 square upon 9 plus y 2 square upon 4 equals to 1 which is an standard equation of the ellipse. Now, if I want to plot this particular curve so, if these are the x is x 1 and x 2. So, then the representation of y 1 will be x 1 minus x 1 minus x 2 equals to 0 or basically x 1 plus equals to x 2. Similarly, the representation of y 2 is x 1 minus x 2. By using this now uh, x along, so this is my y 1, this is my y 2. So, my curve will become like this. So, in this way the given curve is an ellipse having this orientation respect to original coordinate x is x 1 and x 2. So, in this way we can plot any quadratic form by applying the suitable diagonalization and changing the variables. Now, let us see another application of quadratic forms. So, it is not necessary to solve an eigenvalue problem to diagonalize a quadratic form, because when you are performing the diagonalization of the associated quadratic form and the corresponding matrix you need to calculate eigenvalues and then eigenvectors. So, it will take lot of computation. So, alternative is a congruence transformation C transpose A C in which C is a non singular can be found that will do the same job. For example, by using the LDU factorization and since here in the quadratic form A is a symmetric matrix. So, always we can write this matrix u as l transpose. So, I can write a equals to l d into l transpose which is a congruence transformation c transpose a c where l equals to c. Now, the two symmetric matrices a and b are called congruent if there exist an invertible matrix h such that a equals to s transpose b s. For example, here the matrix is A 13 5 5 13 and 8 0 0 18 are congruent, because just now we have seen that there exists a matrix Q which is 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2 which is A equals to Q D q transpose where d is at 0 0 18 and a is 13 5 5 and 13. Now, my next definition in the same category is inertia. So, how to define an inertia of a real symmetric matrix? So, the inertia of a real symmetric matrix A is defined to be the triplet rho nu zeta in which rho, nu and zeta are the respective number of the positive, negative and zero eigenvalues. So, inertia of a matrix is a triplet in which first component is the number of positive eigenvalues, the second component is the number of negative eigenvalues and the third component is the number of zero eigenvalues. 
counting the algebraic multiplicities. So, if I take this example, so my example is a equals to 1 minus 1 3 minus 1 2 1 3 1 1. So, what is the inertia of this matrix? So, inertia of A can be found just from the eigen values of A. So, if I calculate the eigen values of A, these comes out to be 4 plus minus root 6. So, if I see here, I am having two positive eigen values of A one is 4, another one is square root 6. So, here rho is 2. So, rho is 2, number of negative eigenvalue is 1 and number of 0 eigenvalue is 0. So, this triplet is the inertia of matrix A. Now, we will see a very important result that is called Sylvester law of inertia. So, this particular theorem tells us that the two matrices A and B both are si real symmetric matrices, the same result hold for the Hermitian matrices also. So, A and B are congruent if and only if A and B have the same inertia, means A and B are congruent to each other means you can always find a non singular matrix C such that C transpose A C equals to B if and only if the number of positive eigenvalues, number of negative eigenvalues and number of zero eigenvalues for A and B are same. So, in this way we can say the result is enough to check whether two matrices are congruent or not. The alternate statement of this theorem is suppose D be a diagonal representation of a symmetric matrix A. We say that the index of A is the number of positive entries in D and the signature of A is the number of positive entries in D minus number of negative entries in D. If R be the rank of A, so R will be the number of non-zero entries in the diagonal representation of A because number of non-zero eigenvalues, then P the index and S as the signature. So, for example, if you are having a matrix A which is a 4 by 4 real symmetric matrix and eigenvalues of A let us say you are having 2 minus 1, 3 and 0. Then we will define index of A equals to number of positive eigenvalues or number of positive entries in the diagonal representation of A. Since A is symmetric, so I can always write A equals to Q D Q transpose, so Q 2 minus 1 3 0 into Q transpose. So, here index of A is the number of positive entries, so it is 2, signature is number of positive entries minus number of negative entries. So, here I am having two positive entries and one negative entry. So, 2 minus 1 comes out to be 1 and as I told you rank of A is index plus signature and which is the number of non-zero entries in the diagonal representation of the matrix A. So, again the Sylvester law of inertia can be defined like this. 
the two matrices two symmetric matrices a and b are congruent if and only if they are diagonal representations have the same rank index and signature. So, this is the alternate definition or alternate statement I will write. So, let us consider an example of this. So, determine which of the following matrices are congruent to each other. So, all the three matrices are given where the matrix A is 1 minus 1 3 minus 1 2 1 3 1 1. The matrix B is 1 2 1 2 3 2 and 1 2 1 and C is having first row as 1 0 1 0 1 2 and 1 2 1. So, if I calculate the eigenvalues of matrix A, so eigenvalues of matrix A comes out to be for root 6 and minus root 6. The eigenvalue of matrix B is 0 5 plus square root 33 by 2 and 5 minus square root 33 by 2. And the eigenvalues of the matrix C are 1, 1 plus root 5 and 1 minus root 5. Now, if I talk about the rank index and signature of these three matrices. So, the rank of matrix A is the number of non-zero entries in the diagonal representation of A and which will be 3 because the diagonal representation will contain the eigenvalues. The index will be the number of positive eigenvalues or positive entries in D and the signature is number of positive entries minus number of negative entries. So, 2 minus 1 1. For this matrix the rank is 2 because one of the entry is 0, index is 1 because only 5 plus root 33 by 2 is the positive entry and signature is 1 minus 1 0. For this matrix again I am having rank 3 index age 2 and signature is 1. So, if you see here the matrix A and matrix C are having the same rank index and signature. So, A and C are congruent and C are congruent A equals to P C P transpose by using either LDU factorization. So, if you go by the earlier statement of this Sylvester law of inertia, so there I need to calculate rho nu and zeta. So, rho is defined as the number of positive eigenvalues, so here it is 2, nu is the number of negative eigenvalues which is 1 and zeta is the number of 0 eigenvalues. So, 0 here it will be 1, 1 and 1 
and the third one will become 2 1. So, again A and C are having the same inertia because for A this is 2 1 1 which is same for C. So, again A and C are congruent to each other. In the same way we can have a diagonal form or quadratic form. So, consider the quadratic form f x equals to 2 x 1 square plus 2 x 2 square plus x 3 square minus 2 x 1 x 2 minus 2 x 2 x 3. So, find a symmetric matrix A so that f x equals to x transpose A x. So, here q x given as So, solution q x given as 2 x 1 square plus 2 x 2 square plus x 3 square minus 2 x 1 x 2 minus 2 x 2 x 3. So, now I can uh, the associated matrix is q x equals to x t a x then a equals to. So, here will come the coefficient of x 1 square to the second diagonal means diagonal entry in second row will be the coefficient of x 2 square and in the same way diagonal entry in the third row will be the coefficient of x 3 square minus 2 x 1 x 2. So, I will take minus 1 here and minus 1 here minus 2 x 2 x 3. So, I will take minus 1 here and minus 1 here at 2 3 or 3 2 entries and these are 0. So, this is the associated form. Now, if I see the Eigen values of this matrix the Eigen values of this comes out to be 0 0.1981, 1 1.555 and 3.2470. So, here if I calculate the inertia of this inertia will be 300. 0. Here rank is 3, index is 3 and signature is again 3. So, in this way since all the Eigen values are positive, so I can say and if rank equals to index equals to signature, then I will say the matrix is positive definite PD and hence the associated quadratic form is also positive definite. I will ask you to work out on this and find out a suitable transformation y equals to q transpose x such that q x you can write as y t d y means the corresponding diagonal representation of the quadratic form. And from you will see the entries of d will be 0 0.1981, 1 1.555 and 3.2470. So, with this I will end this lecture. So, in this lecture we have seen a couple of applications of the quadratic form. These are the references. Thank you very much.